the right to liberty and the right to due legal process and safeguards if you are deprived of your liberty go all the way back to Magna Carta and more recently Article 5 of the European Convention and the deprivation of liberty safeguards applying to care homes and to hospitals. But deprivation of liberty has been difficult to define, particularly in the context of care homes uh, and hospitals where care is provided in a health and social care context and where the patient may lack the capacity to make their own decisions about care and residence. The recent case law hasn't helped uh, a great deal and the two most recent Court of Appeal judgments, uh, P&Q versus Surrey and P versus Cheshire West, are now in front of the Supreme Court to try and deal with issues about the relevance of purpose uh, as to whether there is a deprivation of liberty or not and whether it matters that the restrictions being imposed are relatively normal for that person or just what their disability means that they need. Now obviously this raises much wider issues about the nature of disability and care and about the balance between independence and paternalism. And whatever the outcome in the Supreme Court, the decision will have huge consequences for local authorities, for the NHS, private providers of health and social care, as well as for some of the most vulnerable people in society, their families and their carers. Now practitioners on the ground will just be hoping for clear guidance on how to apply the rules in practice. For those waiting for the Supreme Court judgment uh, in that hope, um, I would urge some caution. There are seven judges sitting in the Supreme Court, so there's a really good chance that even if they agree on the result, they might all disagree on the reasons. The judgment may take some weeks to come out, but as soon as it is available, we'll deliver another webinar and we'll help try and help you to uh, pick your way through it as best we can.